forget of me because I am Mr. Incognito. Enjoy it while it lasts. Adios. <laughs> eating well, I see. Well, that was in Monterey at the Mexican version of the AWRL convention five years ago. I won, I won the dinner with Miss Cable Moss, the local cable company's daughter. And we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. I see. Better, we right. probably should keep this. <laughs> yeah. Folks, for those, yeah. Folks, for those of you who do not know me, I'm Mike Burton. I'm a member of the Winlink Development Team. My primary responsibility is the templates, management of the groups, and field installations, engineering, and procurement for people that desire to set up gateways, etc. My background, six years military, two years Vietnam, 25 years fire service. I started as a fireman. I ended up in management, disaster management, emergency operations, field operations, ICS, 911 center operations and management of the third largest 911 center in California, an IT section and the communications for an 80 station fire department. Do I know what I'm doing? Barely. All right, I'm gonna give you an idea of what Winley templates are used for and how they can help you in the MCOM world for message management and do you a darn good job. So here we go. By the way, Greg's on here. He's my primary form writer. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have anything to do in life. <clears throat> Here's my Mike opening. I'm sorry? Mike keeps me busy. All right, then. Winlink Express, HTML forms. A brief explanation. <clears throat> Winlink Express HTML templates. HTML form templates are used to send formatted information between users of Winlink Express. Content is contained in small XML file is transmitted and received by another Express user, it is seen as a rendered HTML. Some forms are interactive and allow the Express receiver to return an HTML form, like the ICS 213. Mike, Mike. Yes. Always, we, we don't see a, any, any presentation. We just ah, see you crap. and the girl. Crap. That's, what's, that's what happens when you don't hit the share screen button. <laughs> okay, how about now? How about now, Brian Kelly? Right. It works fine. Good now. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we'll go back again. Here we go. Mike, do you want me to get Tron back on to manage this? Yeah, I just want to see her beautiful smile. <clears throat> All right, well, we covered a good part of it. You can probably read as quick as I can talk. Form templates are in Winlink Express and are kept current using an internet auto update process or can be manually updated. Why? Because a lot of people cannot have internet access at a certain agency. Their IT people are anal retentive and will not let you do that. So there is a way to download off-site on a USB stick and manually update when needed. The interactive HTML process from sender to receiver only occurs within Express and designed to work without internet. You can be in the middle of nowhere and the forms will work and you can send them. Their full rendering HTML on both ends is only if both people are running Express. Form content is also sent as plain text within the body of the message to allow viewing by anyone without the form template. It's also a backup if the form arrives Corrupted, which is very rare, you always have a backup in text format. That also allows you to copy that message to your desktop if you so desire. A few forms have no sent XML file as their primary audience is not express users. Thus, they do not see or need the HTML or get the plain text only. Some of these forms, for example, would be the new form for the Red Cross Safe and Welfare, there's a version of it that will send text only for spreadsheet use. A few forms have, excuse me, a completed HTML form can be sent as a PDF copy to normal email clients, though that transmitted size is much larger. An average HTML form converted to PDF can be anywhere from 14 to 30K in size. Very large for HF, very large for packet radio delivery. A completed HTML, excuse me, templates are close as possible to the original form. There are some minor differences that are necessary to accommodate radio delivery. Most of the credit goes to Greg, who's online for his expertise in HTML and scripts. Form issues a question you send to Greg, not me. 
<laughs> There's the link down below. I recommend everyone have that link. You go to WinLink's website, you can go to uh, the Express Forms, and that will give you a lot more information without having to listen to me ramble on. Why use templates? It ensures accurate and consistent data entry. Both sides are using the same sheet of music. It can be interactive to force required fields. Some fields you have to enter something to be able to continue on. Some fields require a certain format of dates, times, and information. It has pop-ups and will tell you how to do it. It can have preset heading information and preset addresses. A lot of the general forms that are in the library, you can customize the form yourself for your agency with your agency, low, excuse me, agency name and information and addresses you want to send it to all the time. And it will remain all the time until you change it. Data can be saved for reuse at a later time. This is very important, especially if you're filling in ICS 214 as you're running an event. You can open the form, enter data, save it. Hour later, open the form again, enter more data. Why do you have to do that? Because Express is the server and your browser can only act one time with Express. That's a limitation of the design of the browsers and Express and there's nothing can be done about it. So you have a load and save, and we'll show that in a little bit. <clears throat> the sent XML data file that we're talking about is very small, average two to three K. Not an issue for packet radio, not an issue for Winmore or RDOP, which are slow protocols, but it does work. That's why the HTML is important in, in Express. What does small mean? It means faster delivery and reduces channel, channel use. You can send more traffic and less channel occupancy. Besides, it looks very professional and viewed or printed, and form use makes you more efficient and less prone to errors. I'm gonna give you a few real examples of form use. Hurricane Dorian and Puerto Rico disaster. One of my responsibilities the Winlink team will assign someone to monitor behind the scenes major events. As an example, Puerto Rico disaster, Tom N5TW of Texas pulled a ship, I pulled another ship. We have the ability to send and see every message you sent in the world over Express. In the US, you can only see USA call signs. In Winlink Administrator, we can see everything, and this is useful for us to help correct issues behind the scenes or help people when they're making mistakes. And that occurred for the first two days in Puerto Rico. After that, it went very well. Hurricane Dorian. Here is a general message ICS 213, an actual one sent during Hurricane Dorian. Is it, I don't know if it's big enough. Let me see how it gets bigger. Is, can you all see that now? Can somebody reply? Yeah, yeah. we can see it fine. Okay. This was an actual 213. Now, I want you to picture that if you were on CW trying to send that. Anyhow, we'll move on. Here is an incident communications plan, 205, that was done by one of the groups for their event for Hurricane Dorian. You can see there's a lot of information there. This form has been updated. It can now import and export spreadsheet information. So on an incident, you can do all your 205 into a spreadsheet and you can import it for sending. Hurricane Maria, Puerto Rico. Here's another 213. This is a one that was from one of the hospitals, Corcovus. And you can read a little bit, but I'm not going to hang on it very long unless somebody pipes up and really wants to read the thing. Very good. This is the form that I use a lot to show people why you do not want to use voice delivery or CW. I'm sorry. This is emergency communications. This is accurate data information. You can print it. It's as accurate as the person that enters it. And in this case, it was a doctor that did all of his information in text, put it on a USB stick, handed it to the radio operator, who then loaded it into the message form, and it went out as he sent it. Operator did nothing but was a messenger. I defy somebody to do a voice communication and try to make that accurate and be received properly. <clears throat> How to access forms and express in use. We're going to get into that in just a moment. Here's a visual guide in PDF. This is very important. I recommend you go to the Sacramento Valley Aries org site. Greg was kind enough to post what I'm going to show you later here. 
This is every form that's in the library now. Very useful for you to go through and see what may be applicable in your area. What the heck? Ah, I can see my girlfriend's been having fun. This is what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, say again. I All said, right. I think you mean what the duck. Well, that's true. I this thought is, that was Elvis. Yeah. This is the Winlink form library current as a version this week. This is every form in there. Every form in that library is extensive. There are Canadian forms. There are FEMA forms. There's Florida State forms. FMRE forms. Oh, the AAA forms, when we're done here, somebody needs to please get with Greg and let's see if these forms are still valuable in use or can we update them. As you can see, the amount of forms is incredible. ICS forms, they're all there. International Health Service form, Ohio State, this goes on and on and on. You can spend a lot of time looking at the forms. We're going to get an express. I'm going to show you how you can bring the forms up and make them very easy and useful. We're going to set a favorite template. Unfortunately, I cannot make Express any bigger, so that's why you're going to have to just go along with it. If you want to set your favorite templates ahead of time, what does that do? That gives you a bar up here of four hot button templates that you can pick from the library and add as quick buttons. In other words, if I want to do an ICS 213, I don't have to wade through the library <clears throat> to find it. It's already there. And that can be changed anytime you want. And during an event, you can change anytime you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you're on a, an event and you need a specific form for that event, you can change it so you have a hot button. This will then bring up the ICS 213. The ICS 213 is one of those interactive forms I mentioned. You can submit the 213 to a person. And if they're an express, they can send an actual reply back to you in the same format. I'll enter some dummy data from my dummy data entry program, which doesn't make much sense. Here is what I mentioned about saved data. This is very important on form. This is a life saver. I have created a 213, but let's figure that I'm going to do maybe four or five 213s for this operation. I'm not going to change any of the header stuff except the time or some of the information in the message. So I can save myself a lot of effort by just saving that whole form and it will save it as a text file. So now I, I, I haven't got all my information. Somebody's wanting to get me more. So I, okay, go get it, I'll redo it. I continue on. I bring the form up again when he brings the rest of the information. What do I do? I just load the information back into the form. Bingo, I can now change the date and time if I want to and add what I want to add. That's how valuable those two buttons are. It prevents a lot of effort. Then when I submit the form, most of you know how this all works, but I submit the form and post it and send it on and the operator at the other end can reply to it. Here's where you set those favorite templates. You have up to four, change them at any time. You simply go in and find it, which one you want, change it. I've just made that a 205, label it. Bingo, done. Now I have a 205, and it will bring up the 205 form. This is the form that has the spreadsheet information in it. Let me see if I can open this a little bigger. Here we go. If you have a spreadsheet and you're working with a spreadsheet, and a lot of major incidents now do everything in a spreadsheet at the planning session, believe me, I know I've been there. You can now copy that spreadsheet information by following these instructions, you can paste it, parse it, and it will populate this entire form for you. Now, suppose you want to export it. You've got all the fields filled out. You've used this form to create your spreadsheet. You can then click here. You can export that to a spreadsheet. Just that simple. There are many, many, LA County has a large amount of forms. They've been driving me and Craig nuts. 
They have a lot of forms that they use and they use the heck out of them. They have bird resource. And a lot of these forms are pretty simple. But look what it's doing for you. Concise, accurate information you are asked to enter. You can't, you can't get any better than that. Some forms will even add the columns for you. I believe the blood bank, California blood bank form, will do that. Yes. This is the blood bank form. I come along here and I place an order. Whatever their instructions are, I go to the next one. And you'll see down here, it will tabulate the totals. Very slick. It takes all the guesswork and the human, and try to reduce human errors, human error as much as possible. Now this is a, I'll show you where that save and load really is valuable and where a lot of the guys in San Diego and the Texas groups have really fallen in love with it. It's extremely useful, makes life easy. 214, you're gonna do a running 214. So you can fill all your information, you can have an activity log, and you can clear just the activity log if you, not, if you want to clear it and do another page. But you can enter information, close it, reopen it when you've got more information to enter. So you can go along to your date and time. I think you can understand the value of that form. There's a couple more hidden tricks. Template settings. <clears throat> this one is not used that often except probably by me or the guys in Palm Desert, California during the Bob Hope Desert Classic, and I'll show you why. You can set a default template, which means if you have an operator at a table under an uh, awning, and his whole mission is to fill this form out and send it off, and they use this form as a demonstration for their event. It's actually a, a one-way health and welfare message. You set your default template, you enable it. Every time you open new message, you don't get the boat. It's going to pop up. They use this form on, to demonstrate amateur radio operator. So they'll type in, I'm an, uh, I'm, whatever the information the party has. Hi, family. I'm here at Bob Hope Classic, getting drunk, getting sunburned, having a ball. And this is being sent by amateur radio. But you can put all this information in. And this form is only to send one way to as many internet email addresses so that the party can tell people that they're okay or what's going on. There is no reply that comes in. It's not a health and welfare Red Cross form. It's strictly a one way to advise that you're okay. And this has worked very well. So that's where that would come in handy. Let me unclick it. Whoops. See what happens if you don't unclick it? Here we go. Ah, I apologize. Here we go. Now let's suppose you've created a form. This is this is the one that you need to really be careful of. And I believe it is right here. Because you can't read that, I'm gonna let you read it. I have to make it bigger. If you use this option, you better be very careful of your radio delivery. Remember with Winlink Express, while you may have a Telnet connection sending to another Winlink operator, that Winlink operator may only be on a packet radio. So if you send him a form that's been converted to a PDF, or you send that PDF to an internet user, regular email user, he's probably not going to get it. Why? Because it's going to time out. This is very useful if you're on Telnet or using Vera FM, but it's very good to also do document saving. So if I click here, whoops, that's the picture. Yeah. Now I'm forced to do this. So if I go and create a form, I want to create a bulletin form. I use this a lot for sending bulletins out. I'm going to load it with. Oh, here's that feature I mentioned while I'm here, where you add your agency group or name. Steve, you need to correct that. Uh, I 
This will stay that way until you change it. If I can spell, that'll stay in that way you correct it. You notice now it's, I've got this in West Coast area. When I fill the form in, and again, you can save that data. When I fill the form in and submit it, and we're gonna send it to somebody and an internet email address. You'll notice that the message is in there to go to a radio address as an actual HTML form. And you see the, the small size, and notice what here. This is what that person will receive. Bulletin from West Coast ARES, blah, 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 blah. But I also sent it to an email address. This is what the email person is gonna see. A PDF, looks very nice. But look at the size of that PDF, 12K. <clears throat> so if you're on a packet radio trying to send this out, you just screwed your pooch. It's probably not going to work. If you're on Vera FM or Pactor 3 or 4, like or Pactor 4, like Sherry, it's probably not going to be a problem if you have a decent connection to both kids. That's where that can, it comes invaluable. But you can also do this. I have this form here. I posted it before I send it. Look, it's an HTML, very small. You can also save it as a PDF to your desktop. You can accumulate them for record keeping, whatever you want to do, zip them up. But you can do all there. The amount of message management and time saving features in Winlink Express using forms is quite involved. And I believe, I guess that's it. Back to the moderator. Dan, did you want to take it over? Uh, no, I didn't. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I'm done. You can ask questions if you so desire. I wanted to thank you, Mike, for um, everything you've done and tell you that I'm surprised you're not the professorial looking type after following your every word on WinLink for MCOM for at least three years. Well, thank you, but I'm just an old man retired and enjoying the Baja life. Yeah, you're having too much fun. Did I, did I understand you to say that WinLink would not be suitable for running multiple instances of on a laptop, even if you were doing something like Parallels, where you could have two or three separate virtual installations of Windows? You could run WinLink Express as many copies as you want on, 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 a, on a laptop. Okay, simultaneously? Yeah, you just, you, you, each one is its own separate entity. It's in its own folder. I'll show you real quick. So you're, you're limited by the COM ports and signal links you've got. Well, yeah, obviously, if you have, uh, I, I do it here during your guys' operation, and I'll show you. There's my normal WinLink Express. There's my second WinLink Express. All I do is create my original, copy that whole folder, rename the folder, and then go in and make the changes necessary. So here's my original under my call sign. Then I can also open up another one under another call sign. And during events, what I do is this one will be on Pactor, and this one might be on Packet, Vera, or Telnet, whatever I want. So that I can do multiple operations. You got to remember, if you're a single operator, you start doing a lot of this, you're going to get really loaded up and confused easily. But can you do it? Yeah, I do it, and I use it very effectively. Does that okay. answer that? Yeah, so this means we could also buy a bunch of inexpensive thumb drives and make multiple copies of a pre-configured instance of WinLink uh, where the users would just have to change their call signs. Yes and no. There's, when you ch change the call, 
And they're not going to just change your call sign. If you go in to change your call sign, you have to do this. So that's not going to work for you. What you would do is you will go in here and do a, if you have a common call sign, like a club call sign, you have everyone on that, and then you have them set up as tacticals. You add all your, add a bunch of tacticals. Each person would have a tactical. Isn't that limited to five? Nope. You have many tacticals you want. Oh, okay. Excellent. So all right. here, I'll just show you real quick. I have, this is what I do with this one up here. New message. So then what you would do is let's say this is a club call sign or a base call sign. You have to have a base call sign to register a copy of Lake Express. And what a lot of people do is if they have a club call, they'll make it all like in 6 kzb to be dash 14. Fill it in. Everyone's in 6 kzb to be 14. Why? Because no one's going to send or receive the case of these 14. And then what you do is you go over here, you change your default account. This is going to be the Radio Club in Baja. I also want to disallow editing of altering. That's a new feature. Wait, where did you go? Oh, set defaults. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, when I go create a new message, it's always going to send to this Krebby C. And Winlink Express is smart enough to all traffic that comes in as Krebby C, you can reply automatically. It will go out as Krebby C. Nothing gets mixed up. You can have multiple tacticals on the same one. But this is what you would do. You'd have a base call sign, and everyone would have their own tactical. Just follow the... 12 character tactical rules in the help file. All right, and are you willing to spill the beans about how close they are to coming up with a um, other than Windows version of Winlink Express for? There, there are up, there's, there's, a, there's a separate groups. You go to the Winlink website and go here, I'll show you. There are other groups that are developing in Linux and you can also, like you say, you can run it in parallel or whatever, but no, Winlink is a, Win, the Winlink team, is a Windows team in the discussion, but you can go here. I, yeah, I have studied that and played with most of them. Okay. And they're, they're not complete Winlink installations. They all lack essential features okay. if you're gonna really use it. I feel for you, but nothing we can do about it. Win, Winlink is a Windows operation. So if you're sold on Linux or you've got a Mac and the parallels is not working or whatever you wanna do, I know, I know, uh, KF7 SRF, Greg, they all use uh, Macs, and they don't have an issue. I can't be responsible for that. The problem is the Winlink team is only made up of about 12, 12 or 14 volunteers, and they're very professional volunteers. Most of them have been in the development field for software, engineering, you name it. They're retired, but they have a life, so they can't spend all day long going through and trying to develop. So their emphasis is on Windows. That's why you see Express as powerful as it is. Does that answer that? Well, no, I've been hearing that for a decade. Well, it's not going to change. Well, okay, until it changes. No. Mike. Go ahead. Yes, this is Oscar from KP4 Radio Fox from Puerto Rico. I was the section manager during the Maria disaster. First of all, I have to say thank you for giving us an, uh, the access of this tool the force of 50 and uh, our hams transmitting data, high priority data that save lives, that works. The forms, they work, even though they have been improved in the last three years. And guys, we have to learn how to use these tools and probably motivate them to enhance them. But this is the future. Having zero error sending messages that is reliable for the agencies so they can trust us. We were asking in sometimes medicine, we were asking for generators or bladders of diesel, and they requested this is real, and, and they were on the same, the, on the proper form for the uh, FEMA, and the, those things that were taken by helicopter directly to the hospital, saving lives, because we have no power for hundreds of days, okay? About 100, my house, 144 days water, we're out about 100 days. Uh, we were six weeks without communication and, uh, across the whole island. So this works using the MBIS antennas and definitely having contact through the state side because the Windlink team also pointed the antennas into the Caribbean. So we have to use these tools, we have to learn, we have to in, in learn and in, even improve them. And always I request, I need more bandwidth. I, I have to 
enhanced more than the 300 baud rate in HF. Definitely there are ways of improving that. So we can get these messages across from the impact zone to the uh, proper authorities and agencies so they, they can serve the public. This is not a game, this is not a contest. This is a real situation that saved life. Back to you, Ned. Um, I'll throw this out, a real world example. <clears throat> when I was uh, in the dispatch center during the Northridge earthquake, I was also a member of Urban Search and Rescue Task Force FEMA number seven out of Riverside County. I was a communications manager for that group and responded. I ended up having a communications van that luckily had an HF radio and a Pactor modem in it, one of the first ones. The only software at that time was airmail. You could only do text messaging or attach a file if you created something. We had to deal with airmail of just creating messages in text format. A lot of errors, a lot of mistakes. If I would have had Express in these forms, I could have managed that event a lot better and more efficient. Remember, the whole purpose of WinLink, folks, is to give you a connection out of an affected area. It allows you to send and receive internet-based email when you are in an area that has no infrastructure. That's its whole mission in life. Packet radio, Vera FM, all those other things are great for local incidents and local infrastructure. But if you want to be truly MCOM capable, you give me an HF radio, a chameleon antenna, a battery, and Willink Express, and because I'm somewhat HF savvy, I can go in any place in the world, and I guarantee you, I'm probably going to get a connection and send traffic. There is no other system or protocol out there that's going to do it. Back to you. I have three short comments, if I may. You got the table, I guess. Okay. <laughs> well, in that case, one, um, I can only encourage people to have everybody who's even ha who even has a remote interest in this um, to practice, 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 because a couple of things that we've run into are just really out there. Um, forms make life a lot easier, but people come up with the craziest solutions. We had that one case, and I don't know, Mike, whether you remember, about half a year ago, where the instruction said you have to submit two separate forms. It was the same resource request form, but for two different types of resources, which is how the LA County wants it. And what people did, and we didn't see that coming, we thought it was pretty easy. You just do exactly, you fill it out, you save it, and then fill it out again and just um, load it, load the, just what Mike showed, load the information, and then just fill out the second part of it. Problem solved, right? You could have just deleted it. But what a lot, a lot of people did, they actually saved the web page and sent it as an attachment. And we did not expect that at all. So they sent one message instead of two that they should have sent. And I sent it to Mike. I said, is there something I'm missing? He says, no, it's easy. It's all you have to do. What the hell did they do? So it was, that was pretty funny. The second one we ran into was last week because we have our own check-in templates, which are also part of our um, bars, our, our shortcut bars. So they have to send a hospital status assessment first and they can send in a personal check-in. Well, one of the operators did, he filled out the form, um, submitted the form and then hit the shortcut button, which replaced all the information in the, in the text, in the, in the actual message with his check-in, but it left the HTML unharmed. So I got both messages, but I didn't expect it. I expected two messages. So things like that, do happen and the more you practice this, the more you're going to run into these issues and there are training issues. So um, we're big fans of, we're big fans of the, of the whole process and it works really well, but you have to practice this to be effective. And finally, um, we do have a weekly winning exercise that people can submit over the internet, over their local packet gateways or HF. And um, Clem, I'm giving a shout out there to Evan. In, in Hawaii, he's taken it upon himself to just figure out how he can do HF no matter what. So he's done it with 100 watts, 50 watts, 10 watts, and he, he sort of sent an email. He recently used one of the chameleon antennas that Mike recommended, and he said, I'll just lay it out in the, um, in the living room, see how far I get. And on one watt, he was able to hit the next island um, with an Envis configuration. 
um, on Winlink Vara. And I have to say, this is kind of the experimentation that really moves the hobby forward. And it gives us a great baseline on what to base this on. So um, thank you so much to Greg, to Mike, and the entire Winlink development team for all the great work they're doing. It is absolutely phenomenal. And we're having a lot of fun with this. And if I never have to use it for an actual incident, then that's OK. But if we do have to use it, we want to be prepared. And that's my two hertz. All right. Here's what I recommend. If you're not familiar with Winlink Express, you can download it and use it on Telnet, on the internet. All the Winlink Express features, don't, they don't care if you're on Telnet, Packet, or Pactor 4. You can use it to train amongst yourselves, get familiar, you can't hurt anything. Get Winlink Express and create an account. Get your own Winlink account. That is a good tool that you can have your membership in your area start with. Another aspect, and I know we're starting to drift off of forms, shares program. The shares program uses the heck out of the forms. Greg has developed many forms for shares, and I'll show you one during, during I don't know if I still have it, during the Puerto Rican earthquake. Well, Oscar, uh, Oscar are you still there? Yes, I am. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Well, yes, I can. By the way, in Express, you can archive every message you have, zip it up and save it for posterity, which I have done. So if anybody, and I've already called down a couple of people that I caught in lies on Puerto Rico. Here's, here's every email from Puerto Rico the, that we captured as a behind the scenes manager so we could see what was going on and to help them out. And here we go. Except when you have our emails peer to peer, those ones you probably don't have. Yep. If today you do peer to peer, and you, here's the thing, if you do a peer to peer message and you have an internet connection on either side, we got you. If you wanna be private, do peer to peer, radio only and never have an internet connection. Okay. Uh, by radio only, you mean uh, don't be connected to the internet. You don't exactly. mean the radio only mode. No, I mean, that's one of the problems that I've got right now is the nomenclature. If you're in peer to peer between two radios, and you have no internet. No one's going to see your traffic except you. But if you are on peer to peer, and either one of you have an internet connection while you're playing around. I'm going to see what you've done. There's Don't worry. The he's 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 uh, still thinking about the lady. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Here we go. I'll jump through this real quick and get to the two parts that's worthwhile. And if we're starting to get in, running out of time, somebody let me know and we'll go back to more questions and I'll shut up. I do am known to be verbose. Well, I hope that guy's got good insurance. Mexico City. This is what the difference between then and now with Winley and Express and the whole structure. What? Hear your screen again. Somebody say something? Hear your screen. It's not sharing? Yeah, your desktop is not showing. Ah, stupid program. It's the program's fault. This is Mexico City, 1985. This is how they handled health and welfare out of Mexico City back to Tijuana, Baja, California. And there they use landlines to send information and to receive information. Juan Tejas, the big man on the left, XC2SI, is still around. He's a member of Mexico's FMRE, their ARRL. XC2FR, sadly a good friend of mine, passed away a few years ago. All the radio equipment you see there that they did all voice was loaned to them by Jim Rafferty and HRO back in the day. Nice modern Kenwood 930. They had to take all messages by runner coming in. They had one telephone line for a while in certain barrios, and they would take messages on a piece of paper. They kept them very short, and they had to transmit all by voice. Very cumbersome. 
a lot of errors, a lot of repeats. They did this on 40 meters by day, and in late evening, they got a good band opening on 20, and they even used 20 meter FM. How much traffic did they do in the two weeks there? they were there? About uh, 550 pieces. But you can see the difficulty. Here is what occurred. Come on, change. This, we're going to fast forward to the next Mexico City earthquake, which coincidentally was exactly 32 years to the day. 32 years to the day. There's a Pactor modem, Kenwood radio, in the Guanajuato, Mexico Guanajuato radio van that part of FMRE's resources, it was dispatched. And they provided the communications to the collapsed building that had a few kids killed and the few that were trapped. Why? Their infrastructure wasn't completely down, but it was overloaded. They had intermittent cell, cell phone connectivity. So that's what they did there. Did they send a lot? 31 messages were sent by Winley, most on HF. Average message side five to seven K, they did use forum. They did use gateways. And if a gateway did not have internet, it HF auto forwards to another gateway to borrow its internet on Pactor. That's how it's technically advanced the system is. Here's the Puerto Rico. Does that look familiar, Oscar? Yes, it does. There you go. There's hey, nothing. you're going through my road. <laughs> There's no infrastructure, nothing. So the Red Cross needed radio volunteers, AWRO assisted in gathering 22 to respond with build kits. I'm going to leave my smart ass comments out of it. The kits are mostly ICOM 7200 with 40 meter dipoles and external tuner. They had to use those 40 meter dipoles and fold them over to get 15 meters to get some communications. Red Cross provided the laptops. However, they weren't updated a lot of them. So a lot of them didn't have the correct forms and were out of date. The Winlink responders, as you can see, no Pactor modems were sent. Steve, where were the Pactor modems at that were donated by at and there, uh, there were several Pactor modems, uh, 22 that had never been used, that had been offered to uh, Mike Corey. Uh, there had been uh, the Tennessee National Guard had 33 that were offered to Mike Corey. Uh, <clears throat> there were... Uh, the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency offered, Texas National Guard offered. Uh, they were all refused. They wanted to use Winmore um, and the internal sound card and the uh, 7200. When that happened, I called you and I called uh, Tom Whiteside. And fortunately, uh, we had enough power in our receive uh, and transmit on the mainland to make it work. But uh, they, uh, they did not use uh, Pactor, although it was offered to them. Okay, one of the prop, one of the gateways that was used was XC3 and in Cancun. He had a pipeline to Puerto Rico on 40 and 17. So Winmore worked most of the time, but it was slower than heck. So we had to behind the scenes send these guys radio messages, simple text messages, shorten down your your messages, use the HTML form. We even created an HTML form for them to use for status reporting, shipped it over radio so these guys could load it, and, and, and that worked very well. N5TW, he has a tremendous antenna farm. He jacked, his, jacked it all around, pointed it down to Puerto Rico, and he was the pipeline. FCC had authorized P4 to be used, but no modems were deployed. I'll leave that alone. Here's the some of those forms I was talking about. There is one of the... Uh, mobile kits. This was at uh, where was uh, Oscar? This was in uh, Guayama. That's Guayama town. Yes, okay. at the hospital. You notice the Pactor modem. You know why there's a Pactor modem there? This guy came the next day on his own, brought his own equipment, and was the most effective communicator out of there because he was the only one with Pactor. Even though it was only Pactor three, his speed and efficiency, he was able to use a lot of other gateways and not tie up the two that they were using on Winmore. And he was solar equipped with an SLA battery. It worked very well. So there you go. Back to you folks, sorry. Uh, Clem, K7HO with several questions. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, first of all, Joe Speroni, our uh, 
this executive manager was hoping you can be here. Uh, I'm sorry I missed the beginning again. I had uh, something come up. But he wanted me to ask you about, uh, uh, are you the person or who can make forms? We're looking at having some forms for Hawaii. I know at one time we had a Hawaii uh, uh, and one chicken form and uh, asked Joe about it, what happened to it. It was removed because uh, due to unuse. But we have on a big island, island of Hawaii, uh, uh, people are working with the survey agency, the Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency, and they have what you call an OXCOM group. And they use a lot of uh, internet. And as you know, an internet can fail in a disaster. But they use a form and one person was able to convert three forms to use in Winlink. And we're wondering if we can uh, have those forms in the Hawaii under the uh, forms or templates and additional forms that, that can be made tailored for Hawaii like we see for other states. Who is the person that we need to contact? Well, you, you're talking to him. Here's the deal. Um, I'd love to have an, a, a Hawaii state form, like o Ohio and Oregon. First, I urge you to go look at all the forms in the library now and see if any of them are even close to be applicable to what you want to use, especially in the general forms. We can simply modify, but if you have to have something specifically created, you're going to just email me. My email is on QRZ. Email me a Word document or the PDF of what you got, and then I'll shove it down Greg's throat and he'll make it work. Will that work for you? Yeah, okay. Uh, I got to make sure I get your uh, contact information. QRZ.com uh, in the 6KZB. QRZ.com in the 6KZB. I'm sorry, can you give it to me again? Oh, I get uh, N6KZB. Uh, yeah, it's on my picture. Just drop the XE. Well, I've got both websites up, both profiles up. Okay, uh, I'll talk with Joe Speroni and uh, uh, we'll see, have the individual uh, for the information to you. Okay, Joe's, a, you Joe's a good man. Yeah, he's the one that's been encouraging us to use uh, Winlink here and that's what we'll be doing. Just to let you know, uh, Oliver, uh, we did uh, uh, a Winlink uh, using one of our meters, a voice uh, net using Winlink. Most of the guys were on Vera FM. We got them cards. We got them, uh, the radios working with uh, uh, RD, was that uh, DRA30. Several of them uh, got their license, so they're, they got the fast mode, the wide, versus the freebie, which is slower. But, and several were on Telnet because they did not have their uh, equipment. But it worked out in uh, one hour that we did it. So uh, uh, we're looking at doing two voice as a training and then a week. Well, we're going to do a voice, uh, uh, one week exercise like you folks do, uh, the Aries uh, LAX NE. Uh, you do that one week exercise and then a voice one and, and then uh, the one week. And then later on, we're going to expand into a while and then to the state of Hawaii. We're getting ready for our. October 3rd SET, which we will use uh, Winlink. On another note, uh, still waiting for information on the May 30th uh, American Red Cross Aries uh, uh, com, COMEX, and we hope to do uh, Winlink on that too. So we're starting slowly, uh, but we're moving toward Vera FM and encouraging people to get the, uh, the license so they can speed it up in their message handling. So. Uh, that's why we're moving forward over here. And thanks to you, Oliver, for your support. And to uh, Mike, uh, you know, uh, the support for Winlink. Uh, I was introduced to Winlink only two years ago when we did our uh, uh, SAT, and I was on internet, uh, Telnet, and uh, that was my first time exposure. So we want to move the guys from uh, Telnet to RF. And, uh, but little by little, whatever means or mode they want to use, Telnet will accept Telnet for them to send messages. And I tell you, it works. Yeah, we are still struggling. Uh, some of the new guys are struggling. I'm learning myself. There's so much to learn. And thanks to your, uh, Oliver, your weekly uh, net, I'm learning some of those things uh, that I didn't know that the capabilities are windling. And it's terrific. So 
for those that are not thank you, Clem. Me, I encourage you to get into it. Thank you, Clem. Um, everyone just keep in mind, Windling's primary purpose, moving traffic in and out of an infected area on HF. Can you do it other means? Yes. The gateways are critically important. There's numerous gateways that you can access to move the traffic. You need to practice with it. It's just a tool that you can use, but it is a tool that once you master it, you will never go back to anything else. I guarantee you. Anybody have any questions at all while we have, before everyone gets tired and starts logging off? Two questions, Mike. Um, go ahead, Dan. First of all, which, what's your favorite chameleon antenna? I'd never heard of them and I just looked them up and got hit with too much information. Come for, oh, it depends if you have the room. If you want to be portable and field deployable, the Chameleon MCOM 2. It's an in-fed with a 5 to 1 unin, and it works very well. Any radio with a tuner, and you just drag, hang a counterpoise. It's equal length with the radiating wire. M Chameleon MCOM 2. Okay, thank you for that. And this is a general question for everybody. I'm getting inquiries about buying Vera licenses. Does anybody want to take part of a group buy? <clears throat> um, so it ends up. I think I think we got twenty here a couple of years ago, and it was fifty a piece instead of sixty nine a piece. I recommend you people take advantage of that. Jose is very good on giving group discounts. <coughs> and Vera, even though it's sixty nine dollars, it's for life for both Vera HF and FM. It's a very substantial protocol when both ends have a good connection and Mother Nature decides to cooperate on HF. Is it as effective and as reliable as Pactor 3 or 4? No, Jose will scream if he hears this, but it is a lot faster and a lot more reliable than Winmore, which is eventually gonna fade away, and it is better protocol than RDOP, and it's the only sound card protocol. If you, are, if you don't have the budget, and you have to have a sound card protocol, it's the only one that I recommend with the license. A true MCOM person is going to save the money and budget and buy a Pactor motor. That's all I'm going to tell you. Shares will only use Pactor. Uh, Mike, this is Clem. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Mike, uh, I saw uh, when you brought out the forms, I saw Hawaii there. There was one, uh, I think the check-in form, and somebody at uh, chat said there is uh, a form. However, whenever I check into uh, Winlink, I don't see that form when I go on the templates. How do I uh, uh, update on. it, I guess? Let me go verify. No, there's no Hawaii. There's HICS. They probably just saw the HI. No, there's no Hawaii form. But here's the trick. Why can't you use this form? This is what everyone else does. You set it up to be your name. And you're done. You're done. What, what does that form not have that you need in the check-in? That just became customized permanently. Hawaii's ARES. And how do we put that under Hawaii as one of our forms or? You don't need to, it's in the general folder. That's why I recommend you download from Greg's website this, you'll see every form in there. That's in the general form folder. You make it a hot button and you never have to do it again. Okay, look right below that. There's a Hawaii state uh, form. No, there's not. Where is the Hawaii State form? Greg, right what there. happened? Greg, what happened? Oh, good, good catch. There is no Hawaii form anymore. They were directed to use the, the general check-in. I guess we, you, you still have that in your library, Greg. It's not an official form, and it was removed because we're trying to prevent duplication. They agreed to take it to use this. I guess some of your people aren't remembering what they said or wanted to do two years ago. This is the form you would use. We will not create a special Hawaii form. There's no need for it. It's just a, too much effort. Here you are, right there, there's your Hawaii form. 
I just made a Hawaii form out of it. What is there that you don't, that, that will not meet your needs? Okay, so all we need to do is type in Hawaii Aries there That's in the it. general form. Okay, or, good. Or whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Big Joe's copy. It will stay that way until you, the user, change it every time you bring it up. You can also, you see this, you can pre-address. You see this form is always going to go to AI6KU when I send it. I can clear that and put new addresses in. This is useful on an event where you want to just have a series of addresses. I'm telling you, if you take the time to ex explore the one link form, I don't think there's anybody that can find a form that won't meet their needs. All right? And Greg, you can clean that other part up later. Okay, thanks, Mike. All right. Back to whoever wants to say something. <laughs> okay. Hi there, everybody. Um, I'd like, if it's possible, for um, us to include Oliver here. Mike, could you send uh, an email to me with, at, uh, with, the, uh, with uh, uh, some email information, contact information, stuff like that, to follow up on these things? So we're somebody looking at this video um, six months from now, we can have a follow up. Some of the states, including my own, are just getting started in this. I have a brand new SEC. He wants to get his arms around it, and we're going to need a lot of help. So um, maybe between you and uh, Oliver, we can get some that info, a place we can get that from. We know that we can go to the website, get a lot of stuff, but we need a way of, of connecting the dots and making it work. Well, here's what I'm going to recommend. You couldn't ask for any more information than here. People tend to not want to do research at all. It's just human nature. You can go to the Book of Knowledge on the WinLink website, and you'll find so much information, how-to videos, how to do WinLink Express, how to install it, articles and application stories, and you will find a whole world of how-to recipes. I recommend that all everyone go to the WinLink website, spend the time, going through the Book of Knowledge. There's nothing you cannot see there. And this is probably the best part in the Book of Knowledge. Oliver and my good friend Rob out of San Diego spent several weeks and created an entire series how to operate Winlink Express, how to create and resume files, create PDF. Everything I've talked about is pretty much there. So that is what I highly recommend. It's there for you now, no duplication. And everyone's on the same sheet of music. How does that work? Yeah, Mike, uh, that was all San Diego. Um, don't want to take credit for that. You know, um, San Diego Aries a video series, highly recommended. We recommend it to all our new operators because it just walks you through in these short videos, step by step by step. And there are more guides online. So, and you can always reach out. Dan, does that work? Yeah, it'll work. And uh, we, we have a couple of contacts here to uh, fire off our questions if something doesn't make sense. How's that? Does that work? Well, well, here's what you do. Here's what you do if you have questions. You go to the support link. Have your people join WinLink Program Group or WinLink MCOM Group. I highly recommend it. Did, it. did the screen get shared? Ah, damn it. Sorry for my <laughs> French. Go to the WinLink web, website. Go to the support. Join the WinLink Program Group. Ask your questions. Equipment, software. Join the, all these two groups, WinLink Program and WinLink MCOM. I highly recommend you people join it. There is no excuse for not having information. I see too many people emailing back and forth, and that's fine, but get it all on from official WinLink sites so you get the proper information. And there's even a new one for the Spanish speakers, people. So we're not leaving anyone out. Remember, we're in Baja, and Baja does a lot across the border. Emergencies don't recognize the border, so there's now a support group official by Winley for Spanish speakers. How, how about, about the how about the French? You just excuse your French. Do they have a do they have a source? Who? <laughs> the French. You just said excuse your French. I was asking oh, if they had a source. Sorry for my uh, bad joke. Okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, very good. Is there anybody else that got some questions here? 
I think yeah, I, I did. Oh, I did that. Okay, Thomas, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add to what Mike just added. Those wind links support email groups. The interface there has an, a superb search feature. You're going to have a very hard time coming up with a question that Mike or Ollie or I have not seen before and answered. So if you go into that, join those email groups and use the search feature, very high percentage odds that your answer is already there waiting for you. All right, thanks Thomas. Greg, you had your hand up. Greg. No, I was just clapping for uh, Mike. Oh. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good, Mike. All right, I'll give you one more shot of my smiley face. Bald head, shiny and all. And we wish everyone well. Felicia Dice. All right. Any more questions here? We're into a, a good hour and three minutes. So, uh, uh, are there any more questions? I don't hear. I don't see. All right, we'll wrap this up. Call it good. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Mike. A very good job. Appreciate it very much. Adios, El Moro. 73s, everyone. Good job, Mike. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Mike.